In this section, we will learn about mechanisms that control the process of translation. Over the years, many studies performed in eukaryotes presented evidence that ribosomes can vary in their protein and ribosomal RNA complement between different cell types and developmental states. These observations culminated in the postulation of the ribosome filter hypothesis by Marrow and Edelman in the year 2002. The authors proposed that the ribosome composition functions as a translation determination factor depending on the ribosomal proteins and the ribosomal RNA sequences represented in the respective ribosome, the complex acts like a filter that selects for specific messenger RNAs and hence modulates translation. Ribosomal protein heterogeneity can arise from differential expression of paralogs and homologs of the ribosomal proteins within different cell types, or that can occur due to different post-translational modifications, such as phosphorylation. The protein to ribosomal RNA ratio may also slightly vary within ribosomal composition, affecting translation efficiency and selectivity. Ribosomal RNA genes are also present in multiple copies throughout the genomes of organisms from all domains of life. For example, the bacteria Streptomyces coelicolor harbors six copies of divergent large subunit ribosomal RNA genes that constitute at least five different large subunit ribosomal RNA species in a cell. These genes were shown to be differentially transcribed during the morphological development of the organism. There also can be heterogeneity of the transfer RNAs that are expressed within a specific cell type or during exposure to specific environmental conditions or developmental stages. Thus, the heterogeneity of the ribosome itself is a major constituent that helps control the process of translation and can add specificity for which messages are more readily transcribed by the ribosome. Another method of translational control is through the messenger RNA molecule itself. Secondary structure within the messenger RNA can keep it folded in a way that it cannot bind efficiently with the ribosome to allow for translation. Small microRNAs may be required to alleviate this type of secondary structure and enable the translation process. By holding messenger RNA inactive, it can provide a cell with a much faster response time to produce new proteins when they are needed. The messenger RNA can be unfolded and translated rather than having to open a gene up in the DNA, transcribe it, process it, and transfer it into the cytoplasm where it can be made into a protein. Of note, microRNAs can also target messenger RNAs for degradation and serve as a regulatory mechanism for protein production. Fire and Mello were awarded the 2006 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for this discovery. Finally, the act of actually producing the new protein can also regulate its production. So during the translation process, the nascent peptide has to extend from the center of the ribosome through a very long tunnel to the surface of the ribosome. This can also be an area where the translation process can be controlled. Certain peptide sequences specifically interact with the tunnel walls and can induce ribosome stalling Furthermore, the exit tunnel is a binding site for clinically important classes of antibiotics known as the macrolides. When synthesizing proteins contain proline stretches, such as several prolines in a row, ribosomes become stalled. Stalling is alleviated by a specialized elongation factor called EFP in bacteria. Thus, this can be a mechanism for helping to control which proteins get translated and how quickly. This diagram here shows the macrolide antibiotic erythromycin shown in green binding with the tunnel wall. 
So when it binds to the tunnel wall, it will block the ability of the protein to travel through the tunnel exit and be produced by the ribosome. This is a toxic event to the cell and will cause bacterial cell death. Notably, erythromycin does not bind to eukaryotic ribosomes and inhibit the production of eukaryotic proteins, and thus is an effective antibiotic treatment. Overall, we have seen multiple mechanisms for the control of translation. These include the heterogeneity of the ribosomes in different cellular types or under different environmental conditions. The secondary structure of messenger RNA, this can hold messenger RNA inactive or it can target it for degradation. Interactions of the nascent peptide with the ribosome tunnel can also cause stalling of the translation process and can help control the rate of translation. Where we will conclude our discussions about the translation process.